think it's time to start covering a few topics on Jetpack Compose in the style that we usually do on this channel. The goal today is to demystify state in Jetpack Compose following the mental process that I had followed until I got it down myself. State is one of the key concepts in Jetpack Compose. Understanding how to use it is essential for anyone using this framework, regardless of experience. And in this video, we will examine the concept of state in order to gain a better understanding of it. As always, an important first step before exploring the future is understanding the past. And even though XML Android development does not even remotely classify as the past, because it still plays a huge role in the Android industry, the existence of Compose at least shows us what the future probably will look like. In XML views, a view is an object, a class. It holds the necessary state as an attribute. For example, let's take the button, classic view. You can get a reference to the button that's created by the Android system according to your XML configuration. You can, of course, also create a button programmatically, which is also what I'm going to do now for ease of explanation. So, the idea is to create a button that will display as a text on it how many times it's been clicked. Now, this is a super um, classic example, but it just works very well to demonstrate the difference in um, paradigm between XML configuration, a UI, and Jetpack Compose. So, let's do just that. I'm going to create a new button programmatically. So, as we said, a button is a class, so it has its own constructor. It requires a context, so I'm in a dummy fragment right now, just for ease of explanation. So I would require context for that. And I'm also going to create a counter that's going to be showing us how many times the button, to keep track of how many times we've clicked this button. So, as we said, a button is a class. In order to hold state, you have to set its respective attributes accordingly. So now what we have to do is, in order to set the text of the button to show the value of the counter, we actually need to access the getter, um, uh, the setter of the button. So we're going to go button, and using a Kotlin syntax, we get access to the text field, and we actually can easily show the button in a string. Now. It says that it's always zero, of course, it's always zero, but we're not done yet. Now we need to actually perform the functionality, implement the functionality to increment this counter every time a button is clicked. So how can we do that? That's pretty easy. We can set a click listener, and here, every time it's clicked, we can increment the counter. But incrementing the counter will not actually change the text of the button because the value of the text field inside the button is still what it used to, which is zero in this case. So we need to recall this line of code here. So every time we increment the counter, we also update the text of the button. And this should work. I'm going to run that just for uh, demonstration purposes, even though it's pretty simple code. Um, oh, of course, we have created the button, but we're not actually inflating that button in the actual frame layout. So let's do this, uh, just that. I have a frame layout, and we can add the button like so, and the fragment returns that same frame layout. So I'm ready to run it again now. So let's see if we have the button down. Oh, yeah, we have a button that spans the whole screen. And it shows zero. That's a good first step. If I click it, of course, one, two, three everything works as expected. Now in Jetpack Compose, uh, a new approach is introduced, building the user interface, where composables are functions that accept data as arguments and then render the UI with those data. When the data changes, the composable functions are re-executed with the updated data, a process known as recomposition. So I'm going to delete everything I've written so far that's classic view style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a composable function. So we have a composable and we're going to, this is very simple. Uh, so I'm going to name it my button. 
uh, and this button will just have a compose button uh, that takes an argument for the onClick method and inside we can use a text to display something. Uh, what that something is, also we're going to need a counter again. So let's have a counter that's going to be 0, oops, and that's going to be 0, and then we can set the text of that text um, to 0. Of course, here in the on click callback, we can increment the counter. Now we know that since compose follows the data changes, now we don't actually have to change anything else. We don't actually have to go and say, you know what, this text update your uh, text field to the new counter value. It should happen automatically. That's the idea. Also, in order to have that uh, fragment return my composable function, I'm going to use a compose view that also requires a context and then with applying to that, I'm going to set the content of the fragment to the my button function. Perfect. Let's run that. Let's see how state will play a role now. Our state obviously is the counter. Okay, this time our button is a uh, nice purple here. So if I click it, of course, it increments the counter, but it does nothing. Why? Because if it did, then every time you would change anything inside here would cause a recomposition and compose that doesn't want that. It wants you to declare explicitly what do you want to be um, set as a state in a composable function. Not every variable should be a state because then you wouldn't be able to even change anything without having the UI recompose. You need an indicator. Now, this could have been implemented by the compose team in many different ways. For example, it could be um, a special annotation that you would have to put before having a variable as a state. And it could be something like stateful variable and then the compiler would know that this is a thing that it has to observe for changes before recomposing the UI. Well, in uh, the, the decision that the design team made of uh, Jetpack Compose was to create a new wrapper class that's called state. So uh, this state also has a mutable state implementation to hold data. So what I'm going to do, it's the same thing as we could have with the live data, for example. We can create a mutable state of, and this is the constructor of creating a state variable. And look what, what has happened here. We basically have created a state, and because this is a wrapper of an integer, you cannot directly access it here. You can see that the compiler says that you cannot do that. So you have to use the value attribute and now everything works. Of course, you can see that we still have something red that shows us something's wrong. Even though we classified counter to be state, it still seems to be something wrong. Let's see what it is. Creating a state object during composition without using remember. Okay, so this brings us to the next topic. Since this is a state, which means that every time this changes, the composable function will rerun, right? That's the idea. But since this counter is declared inside the composable function itself, it means that this line will also rerun, which negates the purpose of state because in a sense, when you, even if you change this counter state to, let's say, make it one, the next time the composable will recompose and rerun, it's going to be instantiated again. To zero, so it basically negates the change. One solution to that would be to take that state outside of the composable function. And yes, if we actually do that and place it outside, look at that, there's no problem. It works as it should. And we're going to also run that just so we can verify that what we've written actually works. So let's see what happens. Um, oops, we have the counter to string. We should have the value of the counter. Apologies for that. So we kind of get the reference of the object instead of the actual value. So look how beautiful. Now, every time you click that button, it works 
as XML. So this is the idea of state and we need to actually show the compiler that everything that we have is everything we have needs to be observed uh, is not like a regular variable but it has some special sort of um, attribute to it and that happens with state but let's go back to the previous example because this is not a solution you may have a counter for the specific button that's that's a scoped state inside the composable function it's not just a solution to avoid the issue altogether and just place every state that you have outside of the composable function you may actually want to put it inside so let's place it back inside and also let's have this value here again uh, so let's tackle that issue it says without remember and this is where the remember method comes to place so what needs to happen it's very simple we need to remember the state and it's called remember and it's so easy to implement just like that let's import remember and now look how beautiful this of course this is a state it doesn't need to be a, a variable anymore because we're not actually changing the pointer uh, we're changing the um, the inten internals of the state um, instance not the actual pointer to that so this should be a val now and no problems with the compiler i'm going to run it again just to verify that we can now have a state inside the composable function and even though this reruns every single time as you can see the state is remembered across recompositions one more important thing in a production application you wouldn't just be holding state um, only inside composables or inside your fragment because you would have some proper design pattern and architecture, right? So let's say that we follow the current Google best practice um, configuration which states that we can have, we should have a view model um, to hold some business logic. And if that's the case, then we can use live data or state flows to actually hold um, and emit the changes that happen to the data that we eventually present on our UI. So I'm not going to create a view model here, but let's think, let's imagine that we have one and inside we would have some live data. So let's say, um, let's create some live data counter, which is a mutable live data with an initial value of zero. Perfect. So let's say that we have this one. Now, in the fragment, we usually would observe this live data counter and then we would do something every time it would change. But now we have Jetpack Compose. We would want that state to become, to automatically update our UI. But how can we do that? Because as we said earlier, we always need to have a value that is of type state before we can even uh, update our UI automatically. Well, this is where a very handy helper method comes to play. And this is observe as state. So let's forget about this counter here and let's make our counter inside our composable function be the live data counter. Of course, this would actually reference the view models live data variable. And we can have this beautiful, we, we, first of all, we need to declare that this could be an int and I'm going to make it annullable because this is what is required by the observe as state method. And look what happens here. This returns a type of state int. So observe as state and as you can see, oh, I'm sorry, we have to use the by keyword here. And as no method get value. Okay, let's import get value. Okay, thank you. This is some problem uh, that I've also seen on uh, Stack Overflow happening a lot and has also happened to me in the past. There's some problems with the imports. Uh, you need to import the, um, let's see which one it is. We need to import the get value of compose runtime. This was what did the trick here. Let's remove those and let's get back to where we were. So we've observing as state, which, mean, which means that this counter here should update our UI 
if it gets referenced inside. Now this is an int because we use the by keyword and this is what this delegate does. So I don't need the value anymore. And of course we wouldn't change the actual counter here. We would change the live data counter. So we would go to our view model and say a live data counter value. We need to be what it was incremented by one. Yes, and this is annullable, of course. And inside here, we don't need the value anymore. We can directly access that counter. So what we've done is we replaced a mutable state of value that we had with actual live data. And this would this can work with Kotlin flows and it can also work with RxJava. There is the respective observe um, method for every one of them. So that's very helpful. That's very important. Let's run that. Let's see if we manage to keep the behavior the same using live data this time. Okay, so I'm clicking it and it works like a charm. So this was one last important thing that I wanted to say. So let's recap. We need to have a state wrapper of every data that we want to observe as a state inside our composable. Every time a type, a value that is of type state changes, then Compose knows that you're using it in your UI and then looks for the changes and applies them um, in a very smart way. It's so smart that sometimes you can even uh, have it, I mean, remember the problem we had before, we want to use remember because we've had mutable state of it wouldn't work. Well, if you try to run it, despite the compiler issue, I, you know, as a matter of fact, let me try that. Let me try that. We had the counter. So let's not remember that anymore. And we want as a mutable state of yes, thank you, import that. Now, let it complain, let it complain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that counter and I'm going to increment the value and I'm going to use that counter value this time inside here. So even though this complains here, it can work, it will build. I'm going to try to build it. Let me see. Yep, it actually builds, so no problem despite that error here. And the amazing thing is that it actually works. And this is, of course, a very advanced, different discussion that we're not going to get into it now, but I'm just showing it as an example to prove that Jetpack Compose is very smart. What it actually does, it behind the scenes, it runs only a part of the composable method that responds to the chains that actually happen. So in this case, it doesn't really run that line every time. So sometimes it can directly just change this uh, line of code, so only updating the value and not resetting the counter. Of course, you should never um, bet on it. Remember, is actually mandatory in a regular application, but I'm just showing it to you to prove that it's not so simple and sometimes Compose can be even smarter than you think. So, back to the recapitulation, we have to have a state so the Compose knows what to update because without this it doesn't know and it's not going to update your UI every time anything changes. So that's one thing. You need to have remember every time you use the state inside the composable function so as to preserve it throughout recompositions. And the last thing that's also important, we have some very helpful helper methods such as the observer state that goes on live data and we have the respective ones for flows and RxJava. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.